Okay, hello. 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 My name is Kelly Parker, and I am very honored to be here today. I've actually never attended one of these, so this is a first for me on many fronts, and um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I've also never actually given in a presentation to anyone outside of the committee that puts the conference on about the conference, so I think this is an excellent idea, and Dave is always, is always thinking of those good ideas, so um, I think this is good. Maybe we'll continue to do things like this. Um, okay, let me do a couple of little sort of uh, administrative things. Um, you have in your chair or on your table a different conference that I want to just take one moment and call to your attention. You may have heard about this before because I know you have others in the room that are part of this. But um, I wear multiple hats, probably more hats than I should. And one of my hats is I am a board member and an officer of uh, Cyber Huntsville. Does everybody know? Who doesn't know what Cyber Huntsville is? Okay, so everybody knows. Um, and I'm events chair for Cyber Huntsville. And as part of that, we are coming together this year with ISSA and putting on, taking the Cyber Summit that ISSA has always done such an outstanding job with and moving that to the BBC this year. The Cyber Huntsville is joining in and trying to support that effort and sort of take it to the next level, if you will, scale it up and out and make it a signature cyber um, event on the Huntsville conference calendar. So this is our little more on that, so please take it. If you have any questions about that part, let me know. Um, okay, so I am the technology chair for the Space and Missile Defense Conference. Has anyone not ever attended the Space and Missile Defense Conference? Okay, so it is about space and missile defense, which is you know, typically what, or up until this point at least, what our town has been known for. So it's somewhat affiliated or it's often affiliated with SMDC, which is the command element of Redstone. It's actually not SMDC's conference, although it's sometimes hard to see that where that line is drawn. It is a conference about space and defense. And um, we try very hard to bring in NBA and NASA and other groups in, in, into this event. It's quite large. It's the largest conference that goes on in Huntsville every year. So we have upwards of 6,000 people that walk through. I don't have the count of boot counts and all that stuff right now, but it's it's a big deal. Um, one of the largest you know, of, of, of its sort here. Um, it is also entirely put on by volunteers. So most conferences that everybody goes to, there's some organization that the entity that's putting the conference on has paid a lot of money to, and they do all of the work with, with, with that conference. Particularly a conference of the size of the SMD conference. Um, that is not the case. Um, one of the things about Huntsville that I've, always, that I've learned now that I've been part of it for a good while is um, we come together as a team and do what needs to be done. And this conference is definitely that. So we have a group that puts this on. It's all volunteers, people that are government people and industry people people that are vice presidents or presidents of their divisions or their companies or um, and all of the above. So along those lines, I am the technology chair, which means that I am responsible for the technology program that is a component of the overall conference. So we have the program side of the conference, which Mr. Al Sullivan, retired General Al Sullivan, is in charge of. And that's the morning keynote. So that's all of the generals and the keynotes and the SESs that speak. So that's typically the morning, and technology has historically been the afternoons. That's going to be a little bit different this year, and I'm going to talk about that as I start to go through the charts. But I just wanted to make the point that it is all volunteer. I'm the technology chair. I think this is my sixth or seventh year to be the technology chair. Um, I have a committee that helps me do all you know, you know, everything that you're going to see um, that is part of the technology program. Donna has been on my committee for several years. Dave helps every year from a marketing standpoint. He's helped me each year from, from trying to get the word out and trying to help me make technology be a distinct component of the conference versus kind of getting lost into the overall thing. The reason that that's important is we are a technology town, so there's always talk about 
well, it's such a huge conference now, everybody just cares about networking and getting to meet, and it's more of a marketing or a business dev conference. And we always fight that, and the answer always comes back that no, the technology component of it is very important. We are an engineering and a technology and a, and a scientific town, and we don't want to get away from the fact that technology is a component of this event. So as I go through this today, one of the things I'm going to ask all of you as you hear me walk through the charts and we come to the close is I'm always looking for how to kind of make the technology program important and value added within this overall great big conference that's a huge marketing event. So any and all suggestions along those lines, I'm always, always interested in. Okay? Any questions about that before I get into charts? All right. First, you flip over, please. So our, the overall conference is August the 13th through the 16th this year at the BBC, as always. We always take over the entire BBC, so pretty much every nook and cranny of it is covered with something related to the conference. So the technology program, again, think of it as a subcomponent of the overall agenda. I'm only talking about that part today, not the overall agenda. The things that we have on our plate is we're doing a um, symposium, and I'm going to talk about that. That's different, and we've had workshops and things before. This is actually going to be on what we think of as golf day. So those familiar with the conference, Monday is golf day. It's also the day that booths are put up. Um, the technology symposium is going to be on golf day, and I'll explain that more as we go forward. We have our small business program. We've always done something each year related to SBIR, small business support. We, we uh, have that. And we also this year have, and have to say it this way, National Geographic Channels Rocket City Redneck. So is anyone, everybody familiar with that? <laughs> Okay, so they're going to be a component this year of our, of our event. I know. <laughs> it's been fun, too. They have an agent, and you have to go through the agent and the whole thing. So it's been, it's, it's been a lot of fun. We have a live exercise. That's something that we introduced last year, and we're hearing it forward as well. I'll talk about that. And then the Principal Technology Channel is going to be part of our event this year, and, and you're going to be incorporated into the overall program. Next one. So we did a call for papers this year, and this is something that we do sometimes and sometimes we don't, and that can be confusing. Going back to what I said before about trying to make this beneficial and value added. Um, what I don't ever like to do is go through a lot of effort from, up from the volunteer side, put something on, and it's not widely attended. So we sort of try different things each year. I think we did this two or three years ago. So it has returned on popular demand. Um, and though you see the areas, it did close yesterday. <coughs> Originally it was going to close earlier in April. We extended it and extended it um, till the end of the month. So we've gotten 26 or 7 or 8 papers that have been turned in, which is great. Um, and it's a wide range from industry and from um, government side. So we've got a great group. We've got papers across all of those areas. So as you, I won't read all that off, but as you can see, we cover pretty much everything that you would think of from an aerospace and defense standpoint. Okay? So those papers, so that's kind of the main component of this Monday event. So starting on Monday, which again typically is golf day, We'll start that morning. We're in the North Hall, and this is our signature technology. It'll be the first time it's ever been done, so I'm very interested in um, um, how everybody feels about that. If that's something that, because typically people think of the opening reception on um, that evening as being the start. So we'll have an official start. We're hoping to get somewhere around 250 people that attend. We'll be happy to have more, but that's kind of what we're targeting. And if we get a good turnout this year and we get a good response to it, then what we can do is have them, then have the support to really broaden this, maybe even take it into maybe classified, you know, be able to get into a deeper dive with these technology topics. So we, we start out, we have our, um, we're hoping 
districts who have either the CG at SMDC or at, or at, at SES there kind of talk about positioning the conversation from today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow. And if you, anybody's familiar with SMDC's kind of tagline, that's the way they think about things. So we want to take, from the technology perspective, take those topics into, into that sort of overall thinking. Technologies today, technologies for tomorrow, technologies for day after tomorrow. So you see that we have confirmed Dr. Pete, how do you say? Morton. 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 Thank you. The director of NASA Ames. Um, we do always coordinate as much as possible to get um, NASA involved. Pam, every year, has always helped me with that to make sure that we get the right intersection there and support. So that's great. Thank you. And then we're going to break up into the papers. So we're going to split out into two tracks. Again, all in North Hall. You see our <coughs> invited lunch speaker. We'll come back together for that. Divide back out into the two tracks. And then a break in the National Geographic Channel Rocket City Rednecks. And then close and then um, go into the opening um, uh, event. Um, the papers are being chosen now. So that starts as of today. And authors will be, you know, told, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're going to do um, posters for the papers. So they'll present, and then in the lunch area, the open area, everybody, you know, there'll be a poster about each thing. And when we go into the breaks, we're going to encourage people, the authors to be by their poster and encourage people <coughs> to go over and ask questions, and, um, et cetera. So any questions, comments, thoughts? About this being on Monday, Kelly. If you if your paper isn't accepted, are you going to have you could do just posters only for people that mm -hmm. papers been moved? Yeah, I have not. That's a good. That's a very good idea. It gets more people involved. Yep, I like that idea. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions about it being on the Monday? Okay. Our small business program, we actually don't have the day up there, is Wednesday, right? Tuesday. 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 Okay. 14. Donna runs that event, so everybody wave. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so Mr. Knowles is our MC. He's opening and sort of our coordinator for the event that day. <laughs> we have confirmed the director of small business with MDA. Lee Rosenberg, he's going to um, open us up, and then we are, um, we've invited someone from the SBA. In the past, this event has been very SBIR focused. We've also had the pavilion with SBIRs, you know, in it, uh, companies in it. We've had separate little tracks and in, in areas in East-West where the SBIR companies had booths. This year, we're sort of spinning it a little bit, again, always trying to sort of change it up. So this year we are focusing more on it, not just on SBIR, but on small business um, success. And I know this is a topic that we do a lot in town, trying to sort of change it up a little bit. And we've invited someone from the SBA to come and talk about some of the recent rule changes and how the government is working a little bit harder right now to meet some of their goals, you know, that type of thing. So that's what we're hoping that the SBA will come and speak to. Then we'll have, a, we flow into the required breaks that are going on. Remember I said that typically the program is at, uh, side is in the morning and technology is in the <coughs> afternoon. And remember I said how the line between government and the program can get kind of blurred. So this year, the program side is actually continuing the entire day. So that will be going on in parallel to this event going on. Um, on that afternoon. But again, it's a different audience, so this is targeted you know, very much to the small business. And then we're going to highlight a company that has had SBIR success. What we're looking for, and we've got a couple of um, invites out, is not just a company that has won a lot of SBIRs, but a company that has been a smaller company, <coughs> won a lot of SBIRs, and then has understood not only how to commercialize that, but how to then still make that a relevant component of their business as they've grown. So as they grow into a larger company, how do they still, what's their role with the SBIRs? Because a lot of times companies get to a certain size and, they, and it's not worth their effort. 
but there are others that that see that it does have um, value from an innovative growth standpoint. So we're specifically looking for a company that views it that way and can talk about it from both ends of the spectrum. <coughs> STTR, um, a lot of challenges there. It's, it, there's topics every year. Um, it all comes, all, it comes down to finding that university partner that can be responsive. So we're hoping to find either the university side and or the business side or both that has can share how to really make that bond work because there's, you know, I'm a small business, uh, I check out the STTRs each time, almost never do it because, you know, you know you've really got to have that, that right partner. And then the prime contractor's role, not just matchmaking, we don't want to just because we've, we've, we've done that in the past, but what specifically is their role from their standpoint and from the role of a small company in making that, a, that success from the start, success going into phase two, success into the enhancement and into phase three and past that. And we've invited Raytheon because Raytheon just purchased Pipeworks. And uh, Sandy has agreed to talk about that acquisition and kind of what role SBIRs play with their company and I'm asking her to take that forward into, yes, they were very successful with SBIRs, but they use that to develop a specific niche. And from a business standpoint, if you're a small company and you focus in a niche area, that can make you valuable. And that niche is exactly what Raytheon bought them for. So we're asking her to sort of talk about that. Was that planned? Was it a focused um, sort of, was it, you know, the outcome management thing where they were sort of planning that from the beginning and then they worked backwards from there or not? So that's what our small business program is about. We're in the Arena Hospitality Suite, which is a different little area. It used to be called Parlor C, but it's off the ticket, main ticket area. There's a little hallway there. So. Any questions about this this um, event? Okay. And then, of course, the National Geographic channels, Rocket City Rednecks. Um, they are part of our Monday, and then we're also coordinating for them to be in our booth at different times. We don't have the exact times of all that confirmed. They may um, their new season is coming out, so they may they may be playing some of those the first episode in a loop from the booth. There may or may not be book signings. We're trying to coordinate all of those things. So uh, Travis has written like five books, I think, and he has another one coming. Or maybe it's five. He has five degrees working on the sixth degree. And he has so, um, but he, yeah. So um, he's so we're we're working to coordinate all of that. But and we don't know if they'll all be there or you know a couple of them. But we are coordinating that. And, We'll be able to um, share all that as, as it gets confirmed. Okay? That should be fun. We are doing the live exercise. Um, we did that last year for the first time. The government um, side heavily um, engages in that, which is great. So last year we did the um, small SAT that was suspended, and we had the talk, and we had soldiers out there. I don't know if you came in and anybody saw that last year. We're not, we haven't finalized what we're going to do yet, so I didn't want to get into all of that, but we are doing it. It will occur on Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon at the bottom of the hour and um, repeat. So and it'll be in the arena, so you'll find it in the arena amongst all the large assets that are typically in the arena. Okay? And then Huntsville Technology Channel. So um, everybody's familiar with with that. On Monday, they're going to be operating out of the technology booth, which is in East West Hall, um, and going back over. So we'll get to share. If, if people didn't come to Monday, we'll be able to share that from the booth throughout the rest of the conference. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we're, we're trying that out. Going to see how that works. And if it goes like we think it will, then we'll certainly look at continuing to do that um, every year. Certainly the right thing to do is the technology channel, technology program, it's the right marriage. So. And so we still have some sponsorships. These are sponsorships specifically for the technology program, not the wider um, uh, conference. So we have on our symposium day, we have the two breaks, and we have pen and notebook, and um, then uh, you can see, 
So, and it's my understanding that since this is a brand new program, Kelly, we're not talking about sponsorships at the same rate. That, Correct. Uh, these are so it's these are more great deals. What's the word? <laughs> yeah. Yes. These are great deals and we encourage small and large businesses yes. to support us there. Might I also ask, there is a fee, I believe, associated with the Monday program. Yes. But that is not a significant not yes. a significant it's twenty dollars. So if you're interested in finding out what's going on with technology, you can't beat that. Exactly right. Wow. Thank and you. that includes lunch. It does? Yeah, great deal. Mm -hmm. And there, there used to be a conference here called TABS. Yes. So, you know, we don't do that. And there was also a um, software engineering, S3 or something, and <coughs> TABS and that conference came together once or twice. Those things don't happen anymore. And it's my you know, wish <coughs> that the technology program might sort of evolve into and incorporate some of the things that we used to do with that. But the, the challenge has been that the SMD conference has become such a large, you know, business actually, and a large networking, business marketing event, and everybody, you know, it's more about the business dev people, and it's hard to get the engineering community to come down to it. Um, some people say that's because it's not classified, and they don't want to come because you can't get any classified topics. If we, if this year is successful on Monday, and we get a lot of feedback, a lot of positive. Um, comments, then we have the opportunity to sort of step away a little bit, still be associated. It can even be, we talked about this, having it be prior, you know, the week before, the week after, something like that, be associated, be part of the SMD conference brand, if you will, but be a separate technology um, event. So those are the type of things we're sort of exploring. I am, you know, I do this every year and um, I'm always trying to think of ways, like I said, to make it more um, informative, have more value to, to the community. So I want to hear everything. One uh, area that does combine classified and unclassified is in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. The Spa War community yes. there puts on a conference that, that does both. I don't know if they would be willing to share how, how they go mm -hmm. about it or anything. Are you referring to the DOD s and the one that has yes. the, the end of the week that just happened and the end of the week is Correct. the classified? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, I've been to that twice, so I'm very familiar with what you're talking about. And we did sort of talk about that. We, we, talk, we, we went back and forth with doing this on the Monday and with doing it at the tail end. A lot of the concern about doing it at the end is people that, that are not here, that come here, then they're wrapping up and leaving, you know, and so either they're leaving their engineer person, you know, persons behind, or they don't, you know, so that's just one of the most logistical things we have to work Might we also mention that there will be a secured, okay, help, help the liberal guy, uh, liberal arts guy out. On Thursday, there is a seminar that's top secret or secret or something, and that will be held on Redstone Arsenal, another first time. The conference, uh, folks, for those of you who aren't really familiar with it, you know, this is the premier space and missile defense conference in the world. We'll have uh, people from, from throughout the world at the conference. Uh, you can come to the exhibit hall for free, mm -hmm. or you can pay and then attend the really high-powered speakers that, that Kelly will offer that uh, Al will have on the main agenda. And it's still, I don't think the price is going up in two or three years. It's very reasonably priced. Don't be overwhelmed by it if you're a small conference. Come in and look around. I particularly find that the afternoons, as I'm walking around with my magazine, that they can be very productive. I won't be talking to the owner, but typically for my business, I really don't want to talk to the owner there. The chief executive of Boeing, God bless him, Tony Jones, is not the guy who, who's going to interact with me unless I get him on the front cover one of these days, I don't know. But maybe I'll meet somebody who's a little further down the, the, the food chain and they'll help me work my way into the proper place to go. It can be an extremely enlightening activity. It is large, it is sophisticated, it is exciting. 
not take any fun yeah. but just so so now what's really neat to me is that we've got these great bookends a dynamite program on Monday at the beginning and a very interesting uh, secret thing that you got to have your clearances on <laughs> they're going to load you on the bus and take you out to Redstone to uh, some initial place that, that does that stuff secret stuff yeah. Yeah. it'll be neat yeah. it'll be secret neat. Or, or top secret what's the level secret. Okay. I think it's secret level. Right. Which, which means guys like me obviously can't dance but but those of you with those clearances certainly mm -hmm. can. That's and that'll be a secret. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't keep a secret. <laughs> you didn't tell my wife. <laughs> okay, any other questions about what I covered? Um, I want to really, really stress, like I said, this is the first time that we've actually sort of gotten out in the community and, and chatted about this. Um, I'm sweet. I'm sweet. Looking for any and all feedback about your interest in technology being a component of either this event or being branded as its own conference under the brand of the SMD conference. I'm um, very interested in, in your feedback on that. And I'm also interested in ty other types of um, items that you would like to see, other than call for papers we've done, call for papers we've done, keynote presentations, we've done a scavenger hunt, we've done <coughs> pavilions, we've done. Um, National Lab Day, thank you. I organized that. We had all the labs come in. So we've tried all kinds of things. Um, interesting. And this is the lady to talk to if you want to try something different. And, and I think everyone would agree that it's a great event in the community, but it'd be nice to kind of spice it up a little bit, do some yes. different things. Mm -hmm. yes. Kelly can make that happen. I'd like to try. When you had a question? I did have one question. I'm wondering, is there any uh, <coughs> tentacles crossing over between Huntsville's uh, cyber initiative uh, with Mayor Battle and the technology uh, program. program? So Mayor Battle launched Cyber Huntsville as part of the technology program two years ago. And then last, or three years ago, I guess, and then and last year he gave an update because he from the launch the first year we spent our time trying to figure out kind of the shape of cyber principle and how it needed to come together and then last year he came back and, and announced that it was being formed as a 501c6 and you know etc um, we have cyber topics um, as far as a specific intersection between the brand or the entity cyber principle and the conference that's not being discussed right now because they are separate. Um, right now they are separate topical areas. Okay. Part of what Cyber Huntsville's goal is is to that when you you don't just say space and missile defense, you say space, missile defense, and cyber. So as that matures and our culture begins to think that way, then that may sort of take care of itself. Okay. Thank you so much.